Good evening and welcome to the Arundel Camera Club live stream for Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. My name is John Milliker and I'm the club president for the 2020-2021 season. The Arundel Camera Club was founded in 1957 and exists to promote the art, science, and education in all aspects and fields of photography. Normally we meet at 7 p.m. every Wednesday evening during the school year in Saverna Park, Maryland. However, with the current disruptions, we've decided to continue business as normal in a virtual space which allows us to protect our members and guests from the current COVID-19 situation. For more information about us, please visit www.arundelcameraclub.org. Before we get to tonight's topic, we have a few upcoming scheduled items to cover, and for that, we'll turn it over to our programs chair, Christine Milliker. Hello, Christine. Good evening. First, next week on October 14th, we have Don Rosenberg uh, doing a presentation on abstract photography. On October 17th is a field trip to Spokor Windmill in Cambridge, Maryland. Look for an email for more information. On October 21st is our digital and monochrome contest on patterns. And October 22nd is our Brian Buru fundraiser. John, can you tell us a little bit more about that, please? Oh, anybody who's been there before, uh, this is something not to be missed. It's going to be, I believe, it's not on the menu that I'd gotten, but it, I believe it's 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And I've got the menu right here. For $25, you get a three-course meal, uh, starter, choose one, potato leek soup, to tomato whiskey soup, Caesar salad or garden salad. And then you've got an entree, fish and chips, shepherd pie, whiskey, leek chicken, vegetarian boxty. And for dessert, uh, either a chocolate mousse or a traditional bread pudding. This is $25 for all this, and the club generously gets back $10 per person. This is something that is a first-come, first-served sort of thing. We need to worry about the, the county's uh, kind of limits on how many people can sit and distancing. You can also come, order, and take this out as well, which is absolutely fantastic. If you haven't been to the last one, or even if you haven't been to Brian Brew before, this is an amazing restaurant. They, uh, we need to give them as, as much support as we can because this is very, very generous that they do for us, Christine. And also, if you like oysters, Thursday nights are oyster night there, so you can uh, get a good price on those. I think there's also a good price on Guinness as well. But I've got the menu. I'm going to the, – the menu that came through is a little bit uh, – it needs a little bit of help. I'm going to edit that up a little bit, and then we will send that out through, uh, through email. And we'll also paste in our Facebook page – Please invite your friends and family. Please come out and see if you can support this night because it, it really helps us out in the long run. Anyone who orders from this menu uh, will give us the money back. And you can order online and pick up curbside, side, I believe, also. Um, October 29th, we have Steve Hain doing a presentation on reproduction photo cases, making a modern-day antique. He talks about the history of daguerreotypes and wet plate photo cases and how he's been recreating these beautiful antiques for modern practitioners. Let's get on to tonight's program. This week we are going through our photo assignment from September, which is your favorite drink, and we have several members joining us over on StreamYard. Welcome everybody. Hey. <laughs> Let's get on to our photos. Um, and then at the end, we'll talk about who won the most votes over on our Facebook page. Christine, tell us a little bit about the assignment and, uh, and the theme and what everybody had to submit. Each month, um, we are setting a assignment. And this month's topic was favorite drink. And you can submit up to three photos. And the week before, we ask all submissions to be in. We did have one late submission that will be included in our stream tonight, but it was not included in on the Facebook page because it was sent in too late. Um, and we will be seeing that for the first time here tonight. And if you're a paid member of the group, it'll go up on Facebook and people can vote for whose photo they like the best out of what was submitted. Everyone can vote. It doesn't just have to be the people who are participating. And if you want to leave some constructive feedback or uh, any comments on the stream, we will try to include those, although none were included this week. And yeah, so let's get started. 
Our very first picture is by Doug Wood, and it's named Beer. Doug, you're here. Can you tell us a little bit about this image and what your favorite drink is? Well, I'll start with a favorite drink. I got a, years ago, I got a beer of the month, actually beer of the quarter subscription for a Christmas gift, and I have been coming a beer connoisseur over the years and discovering just how much variety there was. Um, the picture actually was just a candid at a uh, um, activity, um, square dance actually, um, party. Um, I think that's about all there is to say. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your photo? Um, yeah, what do you, this, what, I'm new to this. Okay, so first, can you tell us what kind of lighting you used? Was it just the sun or it was, yeah, lighting? it was completely natural, was candid with completely natural lighting. Okay, and why did you choose this topic to represent beer? Um, uh, as I said, because um, maybe I was on mute. Be because I, I got a beer at the Quarter Club about five years ago, and I have continued it. It was a gift, and I've been discovering all the variety of beer. Okay, very nice. I'm in a microbrew fan. <laughs> and do you have any other comments on your photo? Uh, no. Okay. Do we have I'll any? I'll listen to others, and maybe in the future I'll have more comments. Okay. Do we have any feedback for for Doug on his photo? That looks like a good beer to me, because if you're holding a beer like that and you're looking that happy, that must be a good beer. <laughs> Does anyone else have any feedback for him? Teresa, Mike, anyone? Oh, I like the lighting. Uh, the way that it is surrounded by the lighting on the bush kind of gives it, you know, an edge that's soft, kind of goes, I'm sorry, with the hair, kind of matches. I like the way it kind of uh, frames him. Maybe zooming in just a little bit or putting him directly in that V at the top might help. Yeah, that's true. I really love the lighting. The natural lighting. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to blow out that white t-shirt. And uh, Doug, good, good job. Okay, let's move on to the next photo. Whoops. And this is Fred's. Uh, yes, I'm sorry about putting in late. I'm also sorry that I... I've got it wrong because I was just thinking you could put any old photo in there to have your favorite drink. I didn't shoot that in September. So 50 lashings with a wet noodle. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what do you call it? It was, it was done with uh, uh, about two or three years ago when uh, we had a in the kitchen, but that isn't the picture I used. And uh, what I did was basically just took a picture of a coffee cup, but I had to, uh, the light on top of my camera, shot it up in the ceiling, jacked up the, the shadows just a little bit to make it look like it shined off the, the granite there. And uh, there was light coming through the through the uh, blinds or, you know, the sliding door. And it just felt kind of neat. But the, the other one that I that actually used, I think, is a little better because it didn't show coffee. But, you know, I, I could have jazzed it up. I could have jazzed it up a little bit and probably put some steam coming off that, that coffee. But, you know, it is what it is. I like the reflection on this. It's very nice. And the lines leading into it, it's a well-shot photo. Before we go on, we, we have Lewis in, uh, kind of in the, in the scenes, and we also have Bob Weber as well. Uh, if either of you uh, have, have something to bring up, uh, just let me know in that private chat window on the right-hand side. That way I don't just happen to pop you up on the screen and, uh, and kind of put you on the spot. Uh, Mary Lou, uh, is, your, is your microphone working? Y yes. Okay. Yes. You're good. I just didn't know if you heard me when I made that comment. Yes. Yes. You're, okay. you're loud and clear. Okay. Great. Um, Fred, you know what, you know what the most fascinating thing about that is? I love how the spoon is reflecting the, um, the, the window blinds from the granite, from the marble countertop. 
I'm just so well, fascinated by that. Do you see the reflection of the, the underside of the spoon in the, in the countertop? Uh, yes, and that was all done by accident. Fred did not figure that one out. That, what because happened was, it was, yeah, it was we had we had to show some pictures Wednesday night, and I didn't do anything. And so, about ten o'clock that morning, I said, "Hmm, what can I take a shot of?" So I started shooting, and, and uh, I didn't particularly pick this one, but uh, you know, I jacked up the the shadow. It, it's a JPEG, and I just turned it up. Gotcha. I love it, the shadow. Yeah, it, it, it's it's really not a, a a a photo that you would you know it's just like oh let me shoot this <laughs> okay but I you know, I had like a, a toaster there got rid of the toaster then I put it in one and then I moved it over here and and you know I got about three or four ones that I really liked but I took the one that didn't have that didn't show the coffee. I'm just figuring out that's the coffee pot on the right. I wonder if you crop that off and just had the cup on that beautiful table with the reflections be pretty. Yeah, you know, that's not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea. Beans, if we have patterns coming off, you might see that. There you go. <laughs> that's a, there you go. You did a sheet. I, I don't know. What? It's almost monochromatic there. So you got to. Yeah, it was. It, it was in color, but believe it or not, it's black. It, it's in. It's not black and white. It's color. I know, but it's only color is the coffee, which I love. Mm -hmm. It's the only color. Well, there's some green. Ignore that. Yeah, the, the <laughs> other one I had, I got a. I, I believe I think I got a third place with that. It was. It was in the kitchen. One, one of our assignments was in the kitchen. That's just one of them. And, and I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I had to do it in September. I just did a couple of September's ago. <laughs> no problem. But no oh. problem. I didn't know you had to do it in September either, so we're good. That's fine. It with assignments, we just figured it it would give you a uh, license to give you something to shoot for that month. So do it doesn't. It's I'm not do it's not that strict, but that's kind of the theory behind doing the photo assignments. Fred, if you shoot that one again, make sure to keep that corner of the of the counter in that back because I I love the I love the sharp corner there with everything that's round on the coffee cup. I, think I that too. really helps. That's cool. He's just a natural, of course. <laughs> no, just real, just real lucky. <laughs> just real lucky. No, I, I, I think the cro cropping the coffee pot off would would be a good idea. I mean, even as it is, if you just crop that off, I think that would work. Yeah, but I, I put it in there for a purpose because I wanted it to shine off. That it was in the morning. I, I actually wanted it like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any other comments on this, Mike? Anyone? Okay, okay we'll move on to the right. next one. Very nicely. Thank done. you. This is Mike's, so hopefully he'll speak up now. <laughs> <laughs> um. So that was a, a, a gift I received for retirement, uh, rum, one of my favorites. So that's a nice 20 year old rum. Uh, photograph that on a piece of black, black plexi with a light uh, shining on the background behind it. And uh, another light uh, on the front to, so you can read the label. I think this is well done. I like the lighting. I like the vignetting. I, I just think it's really well done. What kind of lighting did you use for this, Mike? So I had a, a small off-camera strobe behind it that I fired at the background. And then I had a, a, an alien bee that I put on low power and uh, fired at the front of it. Um, and then I played some tricks to keep from the lights from reflecting in the glass with bright spots. That's beautiful. What's always... the background? Uh, it's just uh, one of my portrait backgrounds. I, it's just a kind of a painterly uh, background. I always ask Mike. I'm like, Mike, is that post-process backdrop? And he always reminds me, no, I've got one that looks just like that. That's nice. That's amazing. Do we have any feedback for Mike? What do you, what yeah, do you Mike, mix with that, Mike? Say again? What, what drink do you mix with that? Uh, or are you ice? a box man? <laughs> ice. <laughs> Too valuable. Nice. That's an aged rum. It's uh, it's for sipping. Is is that plexiglass, Mike? The, it's a sheet of black plexi. It's setting on yes. And oh, it has got a nice reflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very Mike, good. I got one question for you. 
Uh, you mentioned before that you were you used a polar filter on that thing. At least I thought you did. And I tried it in the studio once with, uh, well, about two weeks ago. And I couldn't get that polar filter to keep that shine from coming right back at me. I, I, I still yeah, so, have a little bit of problem. So I, I actually use uh, a technique called cross polarization. So I actually had two polarizers. Oh. One, one was on the lens. The other one was on my alien bait. Oh, so and that's so, what I was missing. So I, uh, I set up the alien bee and then I turned the polarizer uh, and on my camera until the reflection disappears. Oh, because because I tried it on a I tried it on a car, and it was in a studio, and and we and they had a big you know we had a big uh, uh, softbox on it, and I was trying to get it out of the out of the window. And the only thing I could do, and I tried my polar filter, and I said the heck with it, and I just moved. <laughs> yeah, so I had um, it's a it's a inexpensive uh, uh, eight and a half by eleven inch uh, sheet of pla plastic polarizer that I put in front of the alien bee slides right into the filter holder. Is there a, a is there a left or right on it or is it has it got to be there, a, a certain way to it? There is, but um, it's it's a pain to rotate the alien bee, so I just rotate the the, the trick is the cross polarization, so I just rotate the the one on the camera until I get it. Um, until oh, they're at, at the right angles. Oh, I see. So it was the light that did it because I just couldn't do it on a car, at least with the, the strobe. Okay. Very nice, though. Beautiful. Any other feedback? Before I you move love on. the um, contrast between the black lid and that white white glass, which is so different from everything golden. It draws your attention. <laughs> Before you move on, Christine, we have Julie backstage. Julie, uh, what you're going to use is that right-hand side private chat. If you'd like to chime in, just uh, just let me know in the private chat, and we'll bring you up. Uh, that way I don't just uh, bounce over to you and kind of put you on the spot to say something about a photo. And if anyone watching the stream on Facebook has a comment, please feel free to make it, and we will read it onto the stream. Okay, next photo. And this is, sorry, I forgot to look at the name. Elaine's. I bet. Elaine's, yes. Coffee by Elaine. And I don't think she's with us yet. So anyone have any comments or feedback for this photo? That's one of my second favorite drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's nice. Uh, you know, she focused in on the... Uh, the beverage itself in the cup, uh, you know, different take on a coffee uh, photo than Fred had. So it's nice to see the variety. Um, the white reflection really draws your eye to the coffee you know, from the light, overhead light. I like the circle, circular light right in the center kind of is a spot. And then the yeah, I, I don't like the white light. I think it should should have been clone stamped out. I love the bowl and the colors and the shape, you know, and the cropping. I just, you know, that just draws too much attention for me. I, if it were mine, I would have clone stamped that out, all of it. I kind of like the way it, in the sea around the edge with that in the center, it kind of reminds me of a moon coming around with a center, but that's just my opinion. You kind of have the dark moon on the right also. Any other comments? Yeah, I did this once by accident. And the trick was, uh, she's got cream in that thing, so it caused it to be brown. But if you take black coffee, what will happen is it'll, it'll look like a plexiglass. And so whatever's on the ceiling, it's going to reflect in there like a mirror. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Susan over in chat says that she had a hard time figuring out a brown cup sitting inside a blue bowl. And that's what I thought. She didn't like that it was not symmetrical. I thought it was a bowl in a bowl because wow. the rim on the coffee matches the rim on the bowl. So I was confused. Yeah, I can see that. Any other comments before we move on? 
I, I was confused at it uh, in, in the beginning, um, but then I, as I looked at it more, I really liked the shape and everything. I like the colors. Who's this? Who's this? this Christine? Elaine's. Elaine. Uh, yeah, I like it. I keep working at that weird angle because those those odd angles are are nice. But maybe just clean up that background a little bit. Put it on a, a background that's not very very noisy because I see some I see some stuff on the top right. Yeah. But keep working at that because uh, really creative angles are, are, are nice with uh, with drinks. And it does make it a little more abstracty. Mm -hmm, I like that. Next, we have Mary Lou. Right? Yeah. So this was um, at an Oktoberfest party. And I just saw those three beer steins and I thought they were so cool. So, you know, I, I took a wide angle shot, you know, getting as close to them as I could. And I purposefully, you know, left them out of focus in the background because otherwise they would have been struggling, you know, with the, to see the beer steins. But it was just a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, beer is a good favorite drink. <laughs> Very nice. This I, I like this, and I like how the the people in the background are out of focus, but so the focus is on the beer steins, and the way they're angled to, into each other. I th I like that. Very nicely done. And I like the subtle vignette. Any other comments on this? I liked it because it just looks like they're having a good time, and that's what having your favorite drink is all about. That's true. Very true. Yeah. It's definitely a fun picture, uh, but the focus is on the drinks, which is great. Lewis in chat says um, he's, he's noticing that the center mug seems to be cut off at the bottom. I, I see the bottom of the mug, but it's very, very close. It needs to either, I think it needs a little bit more breathing room. I think he's right. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Yeah. I, I didn't notice that before. Very nice. What, what event was this, Mary Lou? Uh, my daughter had an Oktoberfest event. It was a lot of fun. On Facebook, it is cutting it off a little bit. On my screen, there's about an inch beneath it. I don't know why. That's it's... true. Oh, it's because yeah. you were... Uh, I, I, I see the room screen. beneath it now. I didn't think I cut it off. Yeah, yeah sorry. it's fine now. I just had it full screen to show the whole thing. Light and room, yeah. I don't know why it's cutting it off on the stream. So I apologize for that. I just, just I was like, wait a minute, it's not cut off. <laughs> I'm going to bring in Julie real quick. Julie's got a comment on this one. Julie. I just wanted to say that um, I think it's good that all the gentlemen have the same color scheme shirts. <laughs> I think that helps it as well. Hmm. That was all part of the Oktoberfest trying to look orange kind of. Oh, I gotcha. Some people were really dressed up and others just put on an orange shirt. Yeah. And any other comments on this before we move on? Okay. Next photo is Ed's and it's called Pinwheel. Maybe he can give us a comment over in Facebook. Yeah, Ed, if you can let us know in the chat. What is that? That's sparkling water? That's what it looks like to me. I like the colors and how symmetrical it is. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish there was one more red in there since there's <laughs> three the orange and three green. Or put the red in the middle, maybe? In the glass? Yeah. But I was thinking the same thing. It's like, okay, some, what's, what's not symmetrical here? But it's yeah, definitely it's creative. creative. Very creative. I don't creative. think... I don't think you'll see another uh, photo like it. It's pretty neat. <laughs> what What is it in the middle? So a poured out one? Yeah, I think so. Looks like a glass of it. Any other comments on this? I would have liked to have seen the labels. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. If you yeah. Yeah, face them up so you can see the full front, or at least mm -hmm. either have all. Like all one side or something. I right. wonder how hard it would be to take the labels off. Over in Facebook, Susan says, I like the pattern, but my brain wants to see it symmetrical. Yeah. Mm. Maybe a square. Is it cut square? Well, I think it she's talking like a little cut. bit because the, the, the top red. right and the top left is a little bit off. 
Just yeah, the green one. one is not centered. That's tough. Yeah. Bob, you have a comment for that one? Oh, not hearing you, Bob. I think somebody's got a cricket, too. <laughs> okay. Bob, try uh, try getting your getting your microphone set up, and once we once we do, we'll we'll go back there and see what you got to, to say about this one. Any other comments before we move on? Okay. This one is by Julie. Is Julie in the group? She is. Let me bring uh, let me bring her up real quick, Hook, and I'm gonna. Uh, until Bob gets his stuff taken care of, I'm going to bring Bob out, bring Julie in to talk about her shot. Yes, all of my shots were of the same glass of wine. I was trying to capture the sun coming through. And I just thought that in black and white, this one looks so much better than any of the other ones I had. Um, but I, I don't feel like I really captured the sun <laughs> and my intent was to go back and try again the next night but it started raining and then i had competing priorities <laughs> well i think this is well done i like the shadow behind it and i i the only thing that kind of uh, uh the black on the right side that little v is kind of distracting to me but i love the shadow of the stem of the glass going across and then the shadow to the behind the glass to the left. What V, Christine? Can you use your mouse and point it out? I don't know if you'll see it. Oh, that one there, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That kind of leads you in almost. It almost kind of yeah, pops I, I right like back. that it matches the stem mm -hmm. leading you to the left. Lewis says in chat, the shadow on the left would be nice if it was further to the left. Well, that's true. Oops, somebody's got a puppy. Oh, sorry. Let me... Um... Oh. <laughs> do we do we like this in black and white? Uh, would it would this be better maybe tinted tinted red or more of a wine color? I'm not entirely sure if the black and white does wine the wine justice, but I'm not a wine drinker, so that's a sepia might be good for this also. Ooh. Is there a red sepia? You could you, <laughs> mo hey, that's a cool thing about the monochrome contest. As long as you I'm use burgundy. any one color, right? So you could exchange all the blacks for burgundy or a reddish color? Yeah, I'll have to try that. Good idea. Any other comments on this? I have one comment. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, this is, I guess, for Mike. Mike, would, would a polar filter work with that to take all that shine off, or would you have to clone that, clone that out? That's natural light, right? Yes. Yeah. No, uh, not unless you have a polarizing filter big enough for the window. Oh, you still have to have two it's of them. The, it's the cross polarization that does it. Oh, okay. Fred, think okay. of polarization as kind of like Venetian blinds. And as long as you have the Venetian blinds going in, in the same direction, you see the light. But as soon as you cross them, they, they completely cut out. That's how a, a variable uh, ND filter works. It's two, it's two polarizers that that you're kind of adjusting that cross and that's how the variable NDs work. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, I own a, a variable ND. But that's but, how, that's uh, yeah, how no, I, I, NDs work. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other comments before we move on? And again, anybody who's backstage, just uh, let me know in the chat if you have anything you want you want to talk this about. This is another of Julie's. I'm going to leave it. Let me see. Okay, this one doesn't cut off the bottom. So I like this one a lot better. I don't know why. I think maybe it's because of the shadow in the background of the wine glass for some reason. Yeah, you have the full shadow, and I like the red. Yeah, that red. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to get. Yeah. And this one was the shadow. But that dark shadow in the middle there, <laughs> that is from where the windows, there's two separate windows that makes the light. And so I sh maybe I should have moved the glass a little. I don't know. Julie, but then that doesn't it would have been in the light. I kind of like that it's compartmentalized. It's kind of got that little compartment on the top left with that shadow. 
I kind of like that. I think that I don't know if if you'd make it any better or any worse taking that out. Yeah, it adds interest. I like this one a lot better than the black and white one. Yeah, the only thing I, I would say is maybe try to clone out those those uh, uh, little white spots on the glass. You know the reflections, if possible. That's the only thing I could say. Yeah, I, I like this one better, and I love the reflection, the shadow in the background. Yeah, I was trying to pick up too the the red on the table where the the wine is actually reflecting on the table. In chat, Lewis points out that the glass is is, uh, is distorting the blinds through through in the back, which I think is really cool. Yeah, you could see that in the black and white as well. It seemed more vivid in the black and white. Bob says maybe move the dark bar shadow to be between the glass and its shadow. Yeah, kind of put it more centered in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. That's nice. Yeah, keep experimenting with that, Julie. That's really cool. And then Julie's last one. <laughs> now, this one I would like to see in black and white. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was trying to get all of the, I, you know, what your eye sees is not what the camera sees because there was so much more sunlight reflecting in the wine that I just couldn't get it to come out to in this photo. But maybe I'll try black and white and see what that looks like. And maybe one more, th because it looks like you've, you've focused on the, you've focused on the surface. Does anybody else have an issue that the rim of the glass is out of focus? Or would you rather have the rim of the glass in in focus and the, the countertop out of focus? I didn't notice it until you said it. Gotcha. <laughs> I think the interesting thing is the red band in the stem, and I kind of go from the wine to that and don't notice the rim. Mary Lou, I see you, I see you saying something. You have a comment on this one? Um yeah, I, I I was just saying I you know I, I did just notice the out of focus, but I I would have liked to seen the background a little bit less focus. Although you might lose your shadow, mm. but um, yeah, it's it's very cool. I like it. I I think it's better in color. I don't I I wouldn't like it in black and white. Bob says, "How about a lighter shade of wine so that the red shows up?" Um, typically, what we'll do. Because every photo shoot that Christine does seems to end with, hey, let's put a glass of wine in her hand. So what I'll usually do is I'll mix up food coloring. That way it, 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 it's a lot lighter. But, you know, we're, first of all, we're not wasting wine. And second of all, I can kind of keep it a little bit lighter. And then she can go in and, and adjust the, the reds down if she needs to. The other thing in this photo that I don't know if anybody noticed, but the last dot in the wine looks like a heart. Oh, it does. Oh, yeah. The one at the top. Too bad it's not more centered. That's so cute. Yeah. So my love of wine gave me a heart. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Very That's great. nice. Any other comments? Okay, we'll move on to the next one, which is Ed's. And it sounds like he can hear us now. Oh, did I get his stuff fixed up? Good. Yeah. Ed, over in chat, if you can give us some comments on your lemonade shot. I like this. I think there are a few spots in the background that maybe could have been cloned out. Um, but I don't know about the information on the shot. I want the recipe. That looks really good, Ed. <laughs> And it looks like it might be a little out of focus on the glass. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like either some sensor boogers or, or something on the on the backdrop, Ed. But man, that's a that's a nice setup. I like the little candle in the front too. And I think if there, I think if there was a, a different color in the background, I would have liked this so much more. Yeah, a, darker, yeah, a little bit darker. Yeah, I think darker might be better for this one. Or a blue. Or a blue. Lewis, Lewis suggested uh, more contrast. Yeah. It does seem a little bit flat, maybe. 
I love the concept though. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice arrangement. Very pretty still life. Ed, one of the one of the old tricks is what you do is get yourself one of those little spray bottles and you mix it 50-50 with the uh, with distilled water and glycerin. And what you do is you spray that pitcher and it looks like looks like big beads of condensation. I know that that's cold because I can see the ice, but I'm not seeing the condensation and that's kind of one of those old tricks that it kind of it kind of bounces light everywhere and it's it looks really cool. Over in Facebook, Susan says, I wonder what the background is. Was it just the kitchen wall? If a stage background, a darker color would help. Yeah. I, I uh, don't like the, cam the candle. I, I think everything's natural, but the candle is artificial, and I think it would look better removed. I agree with you. I think that the lemons, the trail of the lemons makes a beautiful triangle, mm -hmm. and I love the bubbles in the pitcher handle, and I don't get the candle. Ed, is there, is there a specific reason you put the candle in there? It almost seems like a, a last-minute addition, unless there's a story behind that. Ed says that it's the kitchen wall that's behind it. And I tell you what, Ed and Mike, you need to, you need to hook up because I think some backlighting on this would be really awesome. Yeah, that would help <clears throat> pop. I, I'd like to see a sunrise or sunset sunset behind it. <laughs> yeah, oh, there's a thought. That sounds really good. I think just a deeper depth of field too would help, um, so that the the glass would be more in focus. If Michelle's listening, hey, field trip for spring. Find us somewhere we can get a sunset behind some our next drink contest. Yeah. <laughs> or water, like a water, you know, at the beach, and here's the lemonade and see this see in the sky because complimentary colors um i know a lot of a lot of us were here i don't know i don't think you were here with us terry but we went to ram's head dockside last year kind yeah, of kind that. of around this time and it's it's got the water it's got the beach it's got a pier and you could see the the sunset perfectly yeah we had they, they had a fire for us we all gathered around the fire it was amazing we were hoping That's to do it again this year but of course we couldn't Susan says, dream on, Mike. We'd all like a beautiful sunset at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd all love to be out at the beach with a sun setting. Yep, with a cool drink in our hand. Any other comments before we move on? And again, if I have anybody backstage, just, uh, just bounce me over a message in private chat and we'll bring you right up. And this is also Ed's. I love the addition of the candle here. I don't know if it's because the reds match up, but or that it's real. It, it fits with the theme. It's romantic. Flowers, red candle, red flowers, red wine. I think it works. And I love the reflection of the candle onto the uh, canister of wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this one a lot. This is much better. The background's better, too. Christine, you're the wino. Isn't that a decanter? Decanter. I couldn't get the name in my head. <laughs> like Thank you, dear. Canister of wine? What? Decanter. My <laughs> brain couldn't come up with the words. <laughs> it's nice that the candle and the carnations match and the wine and the wine glass match because it kind of brings you up and down. And then the brown of the wood of the table also helps pull mm -hmm. the colors Together. And the background actually has some golden tones in it, which makes it warm and romantic. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that it's all different sizes. Not everything's the same height, and it really makes it symmetrical. Ed, you got to tell us the truth. Did you did he do any Photoshop to make those flowers and that candle match perfectly? <laughs> and I just love the way the candle reflects on the decanter on the wine glass and on the vase behind it. And chat Lewis says darker background would let the subject pop more. Possibly. It I, might not make the wines, the dark red show up much. I guess depending on how, how dark you get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe something between that, between the white vase and the wine. Hmm. Interesting. Nice. Just if, you, just if you could separate it with, um, you know, somehow the light is is 
you know, not as bright on the background. So you could vignette it somewhat. Yeah. Fred says, how about a higher camera angle? Very good thought. Ed says over in chat, none, so that there was no post-processing on this. And then Susan says, maybe try it without the stopper in the decanter. The stopper blends with the flowers, but I do like it. Susan's oh. just trying to cut a step out between drinking the wine. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way she thinks. Or you could have taken the stopper and put it on the table. I like the stopper, but you're right about that, Susan. Bob has a comment. Go ahead, Bob. Um, if I were to nitpick, I would move the glass a tad to the right so the rim of the glass at the bottom doesn't cut into the candle. Oh, that's a good thought. But it's just a tiny nitpick. You could even spread it out so that nothing is in front of every anything, so the decanter slightly yeah, that more too. left. The candle is directly in the center of the vase, and then the wine glass off to the right. I don't know. I like it that but way. I, I, I like, like it. The I off. like it mixed up. Yeah, I, I think it's a nice still life. I, yeah, you know, I like the arrangement. Ed, you are the master of still lifes. Very good. Keep <laughs> it up. Any other comments before we move on? Okay, nicely done, Ed. This next one is Mike's. Wow. Wow. Mike has some expensive booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another gift. Um, this one hasn't been drank yet. The other one has. Uh, so this is the exact same setup as the other one. Um, the, the rum bottle on a black plexi, light on the background. I adjusted the light so it looks a little different here. There's less vignetting. And then uh, uh, I hadn't opened that bottle yet, so I, that's two. Uh, that's other some other rum that I poured into the uh, shot glasses. Uh, yeah, but it's it's the exact same uh, technique. I just tried to vary it up a little bit, show more reflection. Is that a face on the bottom of the bottle? It kind of looks like eyes and a nose sticky. That's up. Mike when he finishes the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's so unique. I can see Bob over there drooling. He wants that bottle when you finish it. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I think this is just beautiful. I love it. I love the symmetrical idea of it. It is nice. And the colors, it, the blue and orange just help it pop. I like that the reflection of the shot glass is closer to the rum in the bottle than the light actual rum. It kind of pulls you back into the bottle. Oh, yeah. Any other comments? Well, I, I kind of agree with Lewis, although I was just going to ask, um, you know, if you put a tiny little spotlight on the label, if that would read better, or did you want to keep it dark? Right. That's what Lewis uh, said in the chat that uh, that Facebook, not Facebook chat, but in StreamYard chat. But uh, Lewis brought up maybe bring a little bit more light on the name of the bottle. Yeah, so I did like the like the front of it, or you wouldn't have seen the label at all. But uh, a little more light uh, might have been better. If you notice the the top of the bottle, um, yeah, it's the same light lighting the top of the bottle. Um, it just seemed to uh, uh, pop more at the top than it did on the uh, on the label at the bottom. But it would have been black without the light on the front. Wow. Susan over in Facebook says, "I bought an eight pack of." Uh, oh, we we yogurt at BJ's just so Bob could have the glass jars. <laughs> uh, Dan Aykroyd, if you guys remember Dan Aykroyd, he's I don't want to say he's kind of gone crazy, but he's he's created this vodka that's super expensive, but it comes in a glass skull. <laughs> and I'm waiting for one of these empty glass skulls to be a decent price on eBay because it looks amazing. I don't want the vodka. I just want this stupid skull. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments before we move on? You can drink the vodka. It, oh, yeah. It's so beautiful. So, so Mike, is the, the backlight what makes it bright around the bottle or is the actual background itself brighter? naturally um so it's a brown background and then uh it um 
you know, it's it's uh, one of these painterly backgrounds, so the center of it's lighter than the edges. Uh, but there's oh, a lot, okay. there's a lot of texture in the in the background. Kind of, um, uh, but then you, then you add light to it, and it just depends on how much light you add to it as to how much right. of the background actually comes through or not. Uh, like the little touch of blue at the top and the stopper. And yeah, really balance out like the that. red. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Next one. Oh, we're still on me. We're still on you. Um, so this is the same background. Um, I got rid of the black plexi. I put down a, uh, a bamboo uh, floor mat uh, that's made, you know, so it's a, kind of a wood table look. Um, the, uh, I had a bottle of half drunk bottle of scotch and, and uh, tried to add a cigar to it. I tried really hard to get the smoke in camera and I just couldn't do it. Um, <laughs> so I added the smoke in post processing. Um, I think I think the only thing that that really bothers me about it is the bottle's just not as pretty as the other bottles. But uh, you know, it's the same same technique. Uh, just mixed it up, tried to mix it up a little. I like the plain bottle, Mike, because it, it allows me to go and look at everything else. It doesn't compete with the the glass and the cigar or the smoke. Mm -hmm. Did you try any side lighting at all, Mike, to try and get the smoke to show? I did. I did. Uh, um, but the trick of side lighting the smoke um, and not messing up the, you know, not creating har harsh reflections on the glass um, right, right. was challenging. Um, and, and the fact that, you know, you kind of have to keep puffing on the cigar <laughs> <laughs> to get the smoke out of it. So, um, right, right. Julie asks if the light ice cubes are real, Mike. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bag full of plastic ice cubes. <laughs> Good man. Mike, I'm just curious why the left side is so dark. I mean, it almost blends in with the side of the bottle. Um, so it's like, you know, more, more than a vignette. So, um, I mean, I like the way it... it I know. I'm just thinking it blends with the bottle a little bit. On the yeah, left I, that's a good. That's a good point. Um, the labels came out right, but the uh, background I didn't. It's probably because I was fiddling with the lights trying to get the smoke and wasn't paying enough attention to how well, how uniform the background was and being lit. For me, the smoke and then the contrast with the smoky left edge kind of seems smoky, and I like it. I like the bamboo mat on this one also. Mm. Yeah, that totally helps. I wonder if you turn the bottle slightly clockwise to show a bit more of the level of the liquid inside because you can just about see it. Yeah. That would give it a slightly different effect. Right, right. Any other comments? Fred, Fred says, nice job, Mike. Thanks, Fred. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> like, who, who could this be? I think I know whose this is. <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> Can you tell um, us about your photo? <laughs> believe it or not, this is um, a salvage. The original, the whole of the right side had a great big white splodge because I put the bottle on a light table and I boosted up the contrast to get the colors but the right side had this horrible white thing and I was about to throw it out and I thought well maybe I'll just fold it and see what happens and this is what I got it's very psychedelic on the bottom yeah yeah funny it's the weed I smoke oh it's nice over in uh, Facebook, um, this is going back to Mike's. Sorry, I'm a little late with this. Scott says, the light was very rich, had a very rich appearance. Are you underexposing a half stop or so on purpose to get this this effect? So <laughs> that was um, on the darkness on the left. I probably, I probably was on the background a little bit. The, um, 
uh, but I have to be careful on the label because it's a white label. I didn't want it to come out muddy. Uh, some of that might be luck and the fact that I was trying to get the smoke to show up. Okay. Sorry to go back, but let's move forward and talk about this again. Susan says this bottle held Moscato wine. Good wine choice. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice bottle for this kind of project. Yeah. So why did you choose this drink to photograph or was it just the bottle? It was the bottle entirely. <laughs> There's nothing in it. Yeah. Any other comments on this? I love the colors and the contrast and the reflections of the on the glass mm. edges. It actually yeah. it looks like a pig's face in the bottom where those two green eyes are and then the nose and then a like a beaver on the bottom. But you know, yeah. that's the psychedelic <laughs> that's the psychedelics talking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ju Julie mentions the face as well in, in the StreamYard chat. I hadn't seen that, actually, but uh, nice of you to notice. <laughs> Any other comments before we move on? Cool. Wow. I loved the circles on this one, which wow, is why nice. it was put on our Facebook page. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you'd mind, Bob. Sorry for not asking first. No, no. <laughs> that, this is all food colorings. Hence the blue and the red and the green. And it's a very large uh, brandy decanter. The thing is about 10 inches tall. And inside I put other glasses and fill them with respective liquids. The one in the middle is in fact a wine glass where the stem is broken off. So it will sit neatly in a, yet another glass. Cool. Can I see the full um, version, not full frame, but see what is on the bottom? Yeah, I thought there'd be more. Sorry yeah, it's mm. cutting it off. I don't know why full screen is, I'm just trying to get rid of all the extraneous things on the screen. Probably an aspect ratio problem. That's beautiful. I love it. Very inventive. And the reflections on the bottom are awesome too. Right. Looks mm -hmm. like a flying saucer. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments? I did not. Lewis in the private chat says, uh, great, the blue reflection, blue reflection on the top could be a little stronger though. And I agree. A little bit of a little bit of goose in there might be cool. Mm. Any other comments before we move on? Okay. No, I don't drink the fruit juice. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. You can guess who this is. This is Susan's. Does she have any comments for us? What's in each Bob. mug, Bob? Um, mine is actually lemon tea, which is my preferred morning beverage, and Susan's is English tea with milk. Wow. The great thing about having drinks is I always know which is mine because it has, <laughs> has a lemon in it, so there's never a confusion of picking up the wrong one. <laughs> Does she have it? it does. I like the shot. It's um, it, and, it, and that's a picture of you guys in the front, right? <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago. <laughs> Bob, Julie asks in chat, did you drink it? I'm thinking she's asking about your last photo. Did you drink that? No, no, no. It's just water with um, food dyes. <laughs> Hence, I could get all the colors. Susan in, over in Facebook says, these mugs are my family treasure. We have the named mugs for the boys also. Very nice. Lewis says, says something about togetherness. <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? And this is also Susan's. And this is beverage accessories. That is a dedicated alcohol cabinet 
<laughs> Someone's going to have to tell me what some of that is. Good night. Uh, wine well, opener? The, the, white, opener? The, the white thing is a, a vacuum pump to take the air out of the wine bottle. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, the the uh, black tweezer thing with a yellow creature-like face is actually for tea. You open it up and put tea leaves in it. Hmm. Okay. And some clown thought it looked like a creature, so he put two black dots on it to make it look like a creature. <laughs> <laughs> I like the colors of this and the organization of it. The nuts set it off. Accessories, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the bottle toppers or the wine toppers are cool. Could get a maybe a little more lighting on the top, maybe. Mm, does it, it is a bit dark towards the top. But it sure tells the story. <laughs> Any other comments on this? I like the Death Reaper, Dead Reaper on the bottom. Lewis says like that's your, a that's nice balance. Lewis says that's a nice balance. Yes. It almost reminds me of an organization technique called knolling, where you set everything on a desk that's at either up either parallel or right angles to each other. Huh. It's a very OCD way of, of, of organization. Over, Interesting. Over in Facebook, Susan asks Mike, what else is there on that photo that you don't know what it is? Bob can explain it all to you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the little guy on the right that's looking up. <laughs> that's a wine topper. I can see the cork. He's a wine stopper, yeah. Great right. mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments before we move on? Okay, this is... By Mary Lou. Exceptional, Mary Lou. Yeah, this was Thank well done. You. I really I like wish, this. I, I really wish that I had thought not to put that seam there. Um, I didn't notice it. So, you know, and cloning it out didn't work. It just brought more attention to it. I kind of like it there. It just adds the another line to the lines. You have the lines on the cork. You have the line of the corkscrew and then the line down the bottle it really it really it really helps to see that that you put that you put that imperfection right there you didn't try to hide it you put it front and center in that light and i, I love it i like it oh well never mind that yeah <laughs> uh what is uh what is uh, it's it's funny we just talked about this last week um on another another thing that we do but um there is a japanese method called kintsugi I don't know if I'm saying that right, where they actually embellish the broken, the broken cracks of something. They, instead of, instead of hiding it, they actually embellish that something during its life had gotten broken. And it kind of almost falls along that line that you've got that imperfection there and you might as well, Hey, you're not, you're not trying to hide it. There it is. Yeah, they pour, they pour gold in it. Right. Yeah. They break a plate. They meld it together with gold lines. Tell us about the lighting on this Mary Lou, because I can see, I can see two lights. Um, uh, no, I don't, there was just the one Luma cube, um, over on the left. Well, you've got something reflecting back because if you look on the right hand side, you definitely have a little bit of a rim light on the right hand side. That might be from the white, um, edge of the box. I have a, one of those soft boxes and it, I had the black background on the back, but the, the white was on the side. So that probably picked up some, yeah, that makes you know, all the world. That makes all the difference right there. I don't think if you had that little that little kiss of light on the right, it would look as it would be an, as good of a photo. Yeah, I wish I'd cropped it a little bit differently. Now that I'm looking at it, I wish I'd taken um, so, a little bit off the left and a, and just a little bit off the right. I still I would write, like it to be even less centered. I'd like it to be more over to the left. Do me a favor. Send this photo to Columbia Winery and tell us what they say. <laughs> Seriously, those wineries, they do a lot of art. Send send them this photo and see if they'd be interested in purchasing that because that's good. That's very nice. Over in Thank Facebook, you. Susan says she likes the placement of the wording on the cork. Mm -hmm. And Doug Wood says, how is this actually framed? Can't tell against the black video background. 
Zoom out, Christine. You should be able to see it if you do that. Right there. Oh, it did add black to it, Mary Lou. So Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, now I, I like the left, but I still might like a little bit more on the right. Because I wanted it to be way over. But, you know. Julie writes in chat, this spoke to her senses. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you've got it. I think you got it framed just right, Mary Lou. If you, if you moved it even further, it might be a bit more jarring. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if you were to rotate it just a little bit more such so the lettering has a bit more light on the dark side because the edge of the dark is very close to the lettering. Right, yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I would certainly not try and take out that seam. It gives us a degree of authenticity to it. Great. <laughs> good good suggestion. Yeah, I like I like it now. That's what I meant to do. I meant to put it way over to the side. Any other comments before we move on? Okay, next one is also Mary Luz. This stands out from all the rest just because it's different and much more, you know, a variety of creative interpretations of a favorite drink. Um, so I think this is pretty cool. There's only one, to me, there's only one other that's kind of similar like this um, later on, the red one. But Yeah. I, I like the way it curves and I like the out of focus on the bottom two corners. Does anybody else have a problem with it being lit from the bottom? Because that kind of just just breaks my brain a little bit when you see it being, being lit from the bottom and seeing the, the shadows that way. I was just holding the Luma Cube in my hand. So I probably, you know, didn't put it exactly straight. So right. that that's a good point. Lewis says he's not sure he likes the, he doesn't like the black line at the top, at the top of the, the label. Yeah, you think I should have um, cropped that off? Hmm. It gives a sense of curvature that is on a circular surface. If you took out the black line, you wouldn't see that. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure if I, I like that or not. I, I think I like the black line, the curve. Yeah, I like the curve too. Where it says state and then you, it's just a black blob. That doesn't, I wish it said what state it was. You can't really read it. Yeah, mm. that's a good point. It does kind of lean a little more to the right for the wording and stuff. Yeah, so. should have turned it a little bit. Any other comments? Yeah, you know, maybe if you just turn it a little bit and then you would know what the state was supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, for and also the dotted line would then meet up with the black line more or less at the top and then it wouldn't look a little off. The yeah. texture of the label is beautiful. Yeah, I'm surprised how um, out of focus state is. Um, and I, I kind of thought I had both in there. I could j just turned it a little bit more, but I might have run off, off the label, but no, um, there was a state. So I, I agree with you that that should be there. Okay. Next photo. This one was mine. Ginger ale. <laughs> <laughs> we made some of our own and I was trying to portray homemade ginger ale and I, I know I could have done a little better with lighting and I was using my macro lens and I was trying to get the bubbles on the front of the soda. It didn't quite turn out the way I wanted, but, um, so this was using a flashlight in my kitchen. <laughs> it, it, how did it taste? It looks delicious. I liked it a lot. Um, it was our first attempt at our homemade ginger ale so um we just mixed up uh we got a new blender and we mixed up the ex the syrup i guess and then we already had a a fizzy water maker so we used that and i thought it tasted pretty good 
I think it would be really funny if you said what COVID drives you to do. <laughs> like you can't get ingredients, so let's make ginger ale. It's so I think it's, I think it's really creative. Again, a very different take uh, than a lot of the other photos. I, I do. F could be me, but I feel like it goes from in focus to out of focus to in focus, depending on where you look. Like the sh the GAR on the sugar on the side left side's in focus, but the S feels like it's soft for some reason on the sugar on the front. It's odd. Uh, it, it was a my macro lens, so the R's are probably about the same position because the bag was turned a little bit. So the depth of field is probably just set to that plane. Yeah. I don't think you need the left side of the bag. I would just cut it so you see sugar, ginger, ale. Yeah. Hmm. And I told Christine that the what's kind of off-putting to me is that the the liquid looks gray. <laughs> she needed one drop, one little drop of yellow food coloring, and I think it would have made it a little less off-putting. I just a hit more light. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and maybe uh, some of those fake ice cubes you guys have. Okay. There you go. I'm willing to part with them a dollar each. <laughs> <laughs> we have some of our own somewhere. <laughs> Lewis says, looks like soap water. It could have been. Tasted like it. It did not. <laughs> it was very spicy. It was, which very is why spicy. I liked it. <laughs> so she liked it. Well, ginger's good for you. It is. Okay. Any other comments before we move on? Uh, Susan over says, is the glass clear or foggy? The glass was clear. I think it just was the, the angle. ginger ale is foggy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Was that before we filtered it a second? We filtered it like three times. It was before we filtered it. Oh, okay. It was the morning of before we did it. Uh, Susan says gr ginger is good in hot tea as well. Yep. I'll agree mm. with that. Mm -hmm. It's good in everything. <laughs> mm, I agree. <laughs> okay. Next one. This is some homemade wine we were make. I I made. This is Christine's prison wine. <laughs> <laughs> you buy one hundred percent apple. Uh, this was cran apple juice, cran cran grape juice, and you put yeast in it and you ferment it. Champ, I think it was champagne yeast, right? Champ I I used champagne yeast on this one. Yeah. And how did it taste? I liked it. It was a little drier than I usually like, but I still like it. And she doesn't add any sugar to it, so it's only like 5% alcohol, but it's still good. I like the idea that it doesn't have sugar in it. Because I was thinking, oh my God, that would be so sweet. So now that I know that. Whenever you mix it yourself, you can choose. Uh, I tend to like sweeter wines, but um, also the more sugar you put in it, in the end, you it depends on the yeast you use as to how much sugar is in it because it uses the sugar to make the alcohol. So sometimes the more sugar just equals more alcohol. What What's the device on top? That is a bubbler, which whenever you ferment, whenever you put the yeast in there, you want to allow the gas that is made when it's making the alcohol to escape or you will blow up your bottle. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so... That's there. What it, this? It this is after it was done bubbling, or you'd be seeing the chamber in that air coming out of it, and it, it was bubbling pretty good for the first couple days. It keeps nasty stuff from cut, getting into, and it also prevents other bacteria and stuff from going in and ruining. <coughs> the, was that was that window light? Uh, no, that was a flashlight. Also, flashlight. I, I mean, I, I think I would have liked to see just a little bit more of the beverage. And, and maybe to clone out those those four or five little hot spots. But uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Lewis says, I think cropping out the bottle would be a more interesting image. Either that or more of the of the liquid. Okay. Was... Any other comments? You guys are chemists photographically and liquor-wise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've been known to make a few different things. 
And then I love iced tea. So I photographed my lunch iced tea that I take with me. And this again was with my macro lens. So that's why the shallow depth of field. And I loved the shadow in the background and the reflection through it. So I left that in. If you use a macro lens and you use an exceptionally um, small f-stop or, you know, like a f-22 or something, would you be able to get everything in focus? If you do a long exposure, you probably could. I didn't have enough light to do that. So I think this was probably, probably a 2.8. I could find out for you. F3. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh, somebody's got a phone going off. <laughs> but um, so I just went with some of my favorite beverages, and tea is one of my favorites. Looks looks delicious. <laughs> I like the shadow behind it. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is that background? We have containers in our kitchen that go up on top, and I took the lid from one of them because the background was too busy and just placed it behind all of them. Mm -hmm. Lewis says, I think a crop of the top of the bottle without the cat would make a good abstract. It could. The, the neck of the bottle mm -hmm. could be interesting, like right in there. Yeah. Okay. Next photo. Ooh. This is Teresa Jackson's Prosecco Pretty. and Lilith. Tell us about that, it? Terry. Right. I love it. So I um, took this obviously outside, and I like the stem catching the gold underneath the bubbles, and the bubbles were so vibrant, and also the complementary colors of the blue sky that also reflected in the swirls up on the upper left. Yeah. Terry, even if it's not, please tell me those trees are palm trees. Palm tree. Okay. Well, they don't really look like it, <laughs> no, but if you don't. Uh, because I'm, I'm looking at that thinking, man, that'd be great on a tropical beach. <laughs> That's probably my yard. <laughs> yeah, so. I love the textures and the patterns and the swirls. Lewis says the blue at the bottom attracts his eye too much. I love the blue because... It's the complementary color to the Lillet, which makes it more golden than just Prosecco. Wow. I like the way they're filled exactly the same amount, so the lines go together. Mm. It's always good to share your favorite drink with someone else. That's true. <laughs> Next field trip, Terry. Okay. <laughs> I'll bring something. <laughs> Any other comments on this before we move on? Very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And this is also Terry's. Yeah, so this is an Aperol Spritz. And that is looking straight down into my crystal martini glass. And I didn't do anything to it. It's not enhanced in any way and the lighting is the lamp on the table above the glass. wow that's cool so it makes a really cool abstract and it's actually monochromatic don't you think mm -hmm. monochromatic oh, and patterns and I, I i like it it's really pretty it reminds me of little minnows you know eating something they're all coming <laughs> oh, well yeah. that doesn't make it sound very delicious it's it's cool it's abstract yeah. which is upcoming the patterns and the abstract i love realistic abstraction like just capturing something um unexpected yeah julie says at first she thought it was a flower then realized it was cut glass and lewis says printed really large probably would be very interesting yeah, it might make a really cool, large photo. It's 
kind of more interesting when I shorten it and make it so that it's square like it is. It is a square. Yeah. It's hard to tell when I go full screen. It looks more oblong. Any other questions before, uh, comments before we move on? And this is also Terry's. Three olive martini. Mmm. So that's a strong drink. <laughs> And uh, again, that's the same glass. Interesting. I, well, maybe it's not. It doesn't have the same patterning. And this is taken from above on top of my countertop with ceiling light. So I just like the swirls and the crystal. And the only thing is, I don't usually Photoshop anything. So, But if I did, I would take the toothpick hole out of the other olive. The stab wound. The stab wound, yeah. <laughs> but I like the soft colors, the weird olivey green reflected all the way around and then contrasted with the smoky green underneath it. Anyway. I love the pattern on the bottom. It looks like um, you know, a flower or a star. That's right. Really it almost looks like a starfish. Only yeah. it has an extra leg. Why are there black strips down the side? Of what? Of the picture. Are those is that part of the picture? On the left and right? No, I think it wasn't cropped correctly. I like it. I'm a big fan of the I thought it was a square, circle. but apparently I didn't crop it all out. I'm a big fan of square circle. And there used to be a face, there used to be a Flickr group called Squirkle, and it was all circles inside squares. But if you I, put that on the large screen, does it take the black away? There you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. You won't know because the Lightroom puts it on black, but but it does. It does take. It yeah, away. that's what it's supposed to look like. I like it better. <laughs> I'm almost thinking it either needs to be more saturated. I know you said you love the soft muted greens. It almost looks like it needs to be either more saturated. Or black and white and crank that contrast up. And Lewis says over in chat, toothpick coming out of the upper right corner, uh, change the angle a little bit of that and crop it a little bit more. It's already it's already pretty tight on that glass. Yeah, it's pretty tight. I did when I submitted it, I thought, oh, maybe the toothpick should line up with one of the swirls, but then it's straight in their swirl, and I thought, no. It may, be inter it may be more interesting to spin it around so that toothpick's like a 45-degree angle or going to a corner, maybe. Yeah, going to a corner, the upper right corner. Yeah, yeah, maybe angle it. But the countertop underneath it goes left to right, you know, up from bottom to top. Right. So that has your 45 degrees, so I don't know. I don't know. Good point. So the toothpick doesn't intersect one of the shapes. Well, maybe so the to toothpick out and, and Photoshop the holes out. The, un, the toothpick holes. Maybe. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Very nice. just like a good three olive martini. <laughs> no. It's supposed to be your favorite drink. And it is. <laughs> well shot. And last but not least, this is John's. That's my drink. Campari. Mm, Campari on the rocks. That's what I'm having tonight. Are you? Oh, I'm so jealous. I don't, didn't. I'm having it. Campari with sweet vermouth, elderflower liqueur, and blood orange bitters. You're bittering extra Campari? If any, nobody has tried Campari other than us, uh, Campari is very, 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 very bitter orange. Very And bitter. I love it I with bitter lemon tonic water. I'm about to try that. I usually just do. I usually just do rocks, but I'll have to try that. There are a lot of Campari drinks. All right, focus. How do you <laughs> picture, John? Focus. Um, nice, nice red. I put, uh, I, I put a, a, I've got one of those light panels. I put one of those LED light panels on the bottom, and I shot it up through the glass, and I just, I just took a macro photo of it. That's it. I wish I had, I wish I had centered everything. Like the Campari and then the, the logo in the back of the glass. I had a hard time really kind of balancing all of that. I think it's fine. Thank you. I like it. Lewis says, uh, really big print on a black wall. This would be really striking. 
At a bar. At a bar. Yeah. yeah, that would be nice. I like that it has some little highlights, but they're not blown out. They're, it's kind of like a little sparkle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. that 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 glass just didn't didn't. I mean, I, I I couldn't blow it out. It was it was pretty wild. I'm gonna have to go fool around with my Campari bottle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should use it as your background when you're doing uh, online virtual conferencing. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> You really want to, if you really wanted to confuse people, John, you could swap the red color for blue Ooh. and see if people recognize it. That's true. Or green. People freak Hell out. Yeah, anything, anything but red. People say, "Why?" That is a beautiful red. Yeah, I love it. It did. It did photograph out quite well. I was really happy, and I didn't didn't change anything, and I was so happy with it. It surprised me because Campari is a beautiful red, but. Lit up, man. It just shines. It's not that bright. Mm-mm. Mm. It it's dark. Christine, I think that's it, but you got a special you got a special photo to, to pick, don't you? Over on our Facebook page, we have had these up for a week, and everyone voted for their favorites. And the one that received the most votes was Teresa's. Congratulations, right. Terry. Prosecco and Lilith. Um, Thank you. It's the perfect day for that drink. It was 80 degrees in October. And Terry gets a certificate. Uh, she is the first recipient of, of our certificates. And, and, of course, these photo assignments are open to everyone. But as a, as a perk for our paid members, uh, they, the, the paid entries will go into a gallery, as people may have seen. And then the one with the most likes, which is Terry's here today, will receive a, uh, will receive a paper certificate. So congratulations, Terry. Thank you so much. And we, uh, just a reminder that our next photo uh, assignment is games and card games, board games and card games. So that is for this month, and they need to be turned in by. I need to look at my calendar. I believe that would be Steve October twenty ninth. Twenty ninth. So everyone, start working on your board games and games, and. Uh, then we will be discussing them the first week in November, which is November the 4th. And we ask everyone to go vote. It doesn't have to be just participants. And the we more want votes, everyone the better. to enter as well. And everyone enter. You can send up it to three photos in, and you can join us, and we will be discussing those next month. And when you send your three photos in, please make sure you give Christine a, a little bit of a background on, on all three photos. That way we can read something if, you, if you're not able to join us or you're not able to, to get into to StreamYard. We only have so many spots we can work with on that. Or maybe uh, you're not available on the Facebook chat, but we do hope you do, uh, in, you do join us and let us know some way and be able to tell us about your, your great photos. Any other comments for tonight? It was fun. Thank you. Thank you. Good work, everybody. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Congratulations to Teresa Jackson for receiving the most votes for Prosecco and Lilit on our Facebook page. She will be receiving a certificate celebrating receiving the most votes. Remember, the photo assignment for October is board games and card games. Have those turned in by October 28th. And we will put those in a photo gallery. They can be emailed to programs at arundelcameraclub.org. Please make sure uh, your name is on the, your emails. It makes it a lot easier for me to know who is sending me photos. <laughs> um, you said October 29th. 29th. Before. Whatever that Wednesday is. That's going to be 29th. Do 29th, you want to do you want to put a limit on on what time, Christine? I, I believe last time we we had some confusion of what time. Do you want to put that on there maybe at at, at let's say 5 p.m.? How about 6 p.m.? On okay. October 29th. That way we're not getting all kind of bings and boops when people submit during the during the stream. And uh, then, if, then we can also make the gallery and have it posted that evening. Right. Join us next week on our Facebook page when Don Rosenberger is doing a presentation on abstract photography. Don describes himself as just a guy who loves to make images. His love of photography began when he was a teenager. Along with his passion for cars, Don would often be seen at the 
starting line photographing drag races on weekends. After a while, the cost of photography grew to be too much for, and Don stopped taking pictures. Fortunately, the arrival of digital photography reignited his love for photography and has been his driving passion ever since. It is a constant desire to improve his craft and elevate the quality of his work that keeps Don growing as an artist. Thanks again for joining us tonight, and we will see everyone next week. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. voting for your own i like you could vote for well, five or six just some sort of guide because i was wondering it just said vote and as it you said, said like you the one? ones you like so if you like right. the ones you like it's like well i like like six out of ten yeah i think the more votes you get the better since there aren't very many votes and like when I was looking at it, there were 74 people saw it, but only like five people voted for anything. It looked like I was like, come hmm. on, people vote. <laughs>